I mean, it like starts so pretending that it's doing something. Like, it's it's over. Over. I lost a few clients, but a lot of people stuck with me. No, it's so I'm work. still <laughs> mostly doing <laughs> <laughs> oh. it. Okay, of course. Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you needed to like, tell me that I wasn't crazy. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, I'll work. I, uh, you just need other stuff. I had, I used like stream my phone. Oh, okay. It gives me the same feedback. I usually use like um, uh, something that lets me broadcast on multiple um, places at once. Uh, stream. It's called Restream. Restream, okay. okay. Yeah. You want to like do Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Don't ask. Oh, okay. Oh, crap. Yeah, don't ask. Yeah, I'll look into that. It's like grad school, but I can get a better job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hey, how are you? Doing good. Good, good. Yeah. You jamming? Uh, yeah. Cool. You feeling good? Intense. I jam a little too hard. You jam too hard? Oh, no. Too hard. Fingers are good. <laughs> Your neck are good? You... <laughs> My, like, upper, upper back is like, oof. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. I pictured something like kind of small. Yeah, we're working on optimizing well, your game. Cool. Oh. Oh. Optimizing your jam game. That's... Well, because it's three in it, so we have to. Okay, it's going on mobile. So, yeah, so we have to. If you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've been interviewed. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, are you excited about your game? Are you feeling good about it? Or? I'm excited, but I'm like scared that we're not going to finish the time at the same time. Oh, well, I guess you're very bad. It's working. Yeah. <laughs> you just said the piece. <laughs> Tell me about your game. It's called Cauldron. It's an endless runner for mobile. Uh, Even around the tooth. Into it. You guys have a really good sense of humor. Yeah. And like, so that's the one that runs it. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. Not kind of like the opposite of hostile. What do you mean? It's not like the definition of bias. That he's trying to prove. Yeah. 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 I like Lance because he's wanting to do 3D art. Does anybody else have a show in town? Does anybody have a show in town? But then in our program, I like Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Started looking at, like, the more famous <laughs> stuff. He was like, no, these are all. It's only being live. It's only being live. I want to see if Lamont wants to show on the building. And then you start realizing. But he was like, I can't listen to that. Because it was like, I think we were researching the Orisa and Orisa. Like over two hundred people. Yeah. Which the conclusion was most of them like the Who normally uh, three, 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 three. And almost every one of these had a like a few years before the disaster happened. I mean these reviews. Yeah. Um, most of my plays. Uh, yeah. What well, is this? Would be like a huge game changer in the field. How is that received? Do people like? I'm trying to figure out a way to make it look like you're actually a person. Yeah. Some yeah, shader magic then, like, I don't quite understand. I think the day after the game one of the little talks, really cool. like, to like bend yeah. the normals to make it look like yeah. they're blending like, together, like, like average mm -hmm. them, yeah. punching. Yeah, okay. I don't really like it. What is, is that for something, or you just kind of wanted to mess around a little bit? It, it was for something, but I'm not going to have time to figure it out, because I need to do something somewhere. Oh, God. So we're like... Do so you have a month and I'm already cool. working on another project? Awesome. What? For work. Like, yeah. is, is it a new one from the last time? Oh, it's new, okay. okay. Yeah, I, say, like, I don't remember. Kind of thing, like, we have two games, like, same kind of deal. Like, we'll we'll just VR. VR. Yeah. And I'm trying to phase all the VR one into the not VR one. Okay. Uh, uh, cool. Cool. Like, 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 is there one stuff left to do? Is the VR one the bear one? No, the bear is already out. Okay. Like, we need more people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so we're working with him to like, cool, get a lot of images together. So it goes all the way back to like, it's going to be a lot of different That's like on the like, 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 Oh, okay, okay. So it kind of gives you an idea of like, what kind of thing I don't know. This is just, everything's moving really fast. Yeah, yeah. People just kind of say stuff to me in meetings. I'm like, oh, so you're not talking about yeah, yeah, this meeting needs to end because I have to go back to do things. I had an easier time than I was like, Oh my God. Like, yeah. like, we were trying to find yeah, a we were like, like kind of like, kind of right now. And we were like, hey, where do you guys keep all your files? And they were like, we didn't keep any of your We just called other. I think we're bringing on a new. We're looking for a new artist and animator and programmer. I think we have. We don't have records. It's it's um, Hold on, I need to check it. I need to make sure it's not going out. Am I saying that? It's fine. That's a problem. It's funny because almost every live stream I've done, it's resulted in me standing next to the live stream for five minutes before just talking. So the beginning of every live stream is just you and you be like, bah! <laughs> <laughs> everybody sucks and everybody's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll never know how dumb we think they talk. <laughs> now let me talk about professional wrestling for eight minutes while nobody listens. <laughs> So it really is Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. You picked the one thing that I have. Oh, like a hashtag. I get all the time. You tell me the name of the stuff. Unless I actually. Oh, I, I, I just want to know. Oh, I'm like, this is going to be the time. I'm going to this thing. I'm going to intentionally remember people's names when I say And then I'm introducing myself. I'm like, I'm back, I'm back. I'm I'm back. 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 I'm
uh, arcade ready. Because my, my goal is to put it on the Philly Tron. We're going to hopefully take the Philly Tron up to Wonderville. Uh, it's an indie arcade in Brooklyn that a bunch of my friends run. It's a, uh, a bunch of people around. Uh, a bunch of people I met at MAGFest, uh, including uh, Kyle, who did a lot of the work. And they just, it's like a really cool like indie arcade bar venue hacker space. It's like a real, real dreamland. Yeah. So, hoping to just show up, show up at a arcade cabinet in their bar for a couple months, maybe. So, just want something up there that I can point to and be like, this is my, this is my <laughs> one. As opposed to, so that way when people are like, why is this arcade machine constantly breaking, I can be like, I also did that. <laughs> ignore, <laughs> ignore the broken parts so I can just like, good parts. Uh, uh, so uh, I'm uh, 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 I want to make people watch about five minutes of me wrestling. <laughs> Are you impressed? <laughs> Like a girl. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like, oh, it's a hundred degrees outside. And Steve and I disagree. I don't cut my hair. Yeah, just cut it all. See, see, there's a hundred degrees. Oh my god, that's weird. When I pick up me on my bike, it starts to go out of the wind. I just look really. <laughs> baseball, baseball, baseball song. It's hard. It's so hard. Show up to the plate and take some curves. He does the lesson. He's like, I screw up, but I'm like, I'm hard. I want to touch it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to go back. 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 Show me your banana oh. Oh. But there's like that yeah. What size shirt are you? Uh, I think I'm sorry, I'm actually a small one. So I've been wearing a lot of mediums there. Small, unisex, small man. Small, small man. Maybe a medium. Small, small man. Small, small man. Okay. Uh, okay. Medium with regular. Okay. Like, uh, okay. I don't know. Oh, okay. Wheeling your life with ramen and cup of noodles. Actually My body shape keeps changing. I, I, I figured this is a spirit. Uh, I mean, <laughs> 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 Alright, we're going to kick off Show and Tell, everyone. I'm very squishy uh, now. And I've so we got four Show and Tells tonight. And the first one is Brett. Yay! Brett! Brett!
So um, basically, this is a game. I've, I've showed this before, probably like two weeks ago here. But for anyone who doesn't know, this is a game for uh, for pool and snooker. Basically, uh, it's not an actual like physics-based game. It's more of a uh, uh, calculating the angles of you know how you've got to take your shots for this for for getting uh, for getting a particular pocket kind of thing. So I'll just put up an example here. So um, this is this was also built with uh, with the ability to run on um, on PC as well. So you can use keyboard for controls with this. But um, basically, you start off with 20 questions. Each question shows a shows a cue ball in a particular position. Uh, and it has to shoot one of the object balls here into the corner pocket with a dot on it. So as you can see, I have to get the white ball to knock this into this particular pocket over here. And uh, there's usually several different tools you can you have at your disposal to get that to work. So you can, uh, you got this overhead view camera thing here. You can use different tools like for drawing here. You can like draw and make angles and things like that. Nice. I'm not good at this, so I'm probably going to make a guess and get it wrong. But um, a lot of the stuff here really does um, really for like professional use for like being able to guess the shot. Um, and there's like little shortcut buttons here, one for like lining it up straight between the uh, object ball and the pocket, and another one for the cue ball and the object ball and stuff like that. Um, you can make a guess by just using the slider here. And then it'll show you the actual answer and your answer, which I wasn't too far off, and it'll show you a score based on how far off you were. Um, and after you make a guess, you can relook at your relook at the uh, table. And use the uh, tool, the assist tool that's given to you at the end. So this white line here is to show like the actual shot, like if you were to get it per perfect. And this black line here shows what happens when you make a shot based off the angle you gave. Yes. This ghost ball here is supposed to show like the, the exact point of contact in which the cue ball makes or touches the uh, pool ball. And this little square here, which is really small right now, but it gets bigger depending on how far apart the uh, how far apart the, these two objects are. Um, this square just shows the shade of the angle here. It's just the shade of the square. Um, and you do this for about 10, 10 questions here. Um, just show another one just to show a different so mine was completely off. It was supposed to be a five degree shot, and it was a 30 degree shot. And the, uh, you see the triangle is much bigger. You have different controls for like, uh, for, like rotating the, uh, yeah. So yeah, you can rotate the camera, things like that. Um, and there is two, di there's three different modes for this game. So there's amateur mode, which you can use like a lot of all of the tools that you're disposal to get the answer correctly. Then there's professional mode where you're very limited to try to be more realistic where it's like, oh, this is going to be based off of your you actually playing a game. So you won't have like the overhead camera. I believe you'll still have the ability to draw on the uh, in the game screen, but that's about it. And then there's a third game mode called practice where basically you uh, you get to put in the answer angle. Um, and they and the game generates shots based off of that angle you get. So I can just generate as many shots as I want, and it generates which pocket it's going to be shooting it in, and I just cycle through it at the time. And so I want to change it, and just change it here, and it just makes a new shot based off of that. Um, and, uh, and you can turn the guidelines on and off, so you can show the guides for the stuff like that here. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for the most part. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I like the room. You had a scoring system. I was just wondering how you chose to score it. Oh, yeah. So the scoring, what, what it is, is it's basically a, a perfect shot gives you 110 points. Um, if it's off by an increment of 0.1, um, but exactly 0.1, then it goes to 100%, and then it goes down from there for each 0.1 uh, difference off of the uh, actual. 
excited for. installed a uh, full screen button, which this was simultaneously harder to do than I thought it would be, um, and then easier once I actually knew how to do it. So I can press this button, and it's like nice and big and crisp, which is cool because it wasn't always like the text was like kind of fuzzy at first. Um, so right now there's music playing. Is there a way to like play music on this as well? It's okay. It's it should pop up. It should pop up. Just try it. Mm -hmm. So this is like, it's kind of like ominous, like what, what's going on? Um, and then, so, um, and for me, like the, the pixel art was like the main, the main thing. I, I wanted to do like a 2D, like a top-down 2D game, and then I wanted to do like side scroller, and then the the more the more that I did, the more I just had to keep scaling it further and further back to fit into the into the time frame. Um, so really, what you're looking at is like you know text and a bunch of buttons and like showing and hiding. Like that's like the whole thing, um, and because that's all I knew how to do, and that's really like all I still kind of know how to do. Um, but at the time, I just thought this was like. Like, all I had to do was just like show this, hide this, show this, hide this with each button that was pressed. And that just kind of like blew my mind that you could. Um, so like, this is where you kind of like start to actually get into the uh, the arcade itself. And I'm, I'm not gonna play the whole thing, but um, I guess it was kind of a lot of trial and error I did like Dev vlogs for myself too, so I just tried to like record the whole process, do how many like hours I was taking per thing. I used um, Trello. Um, I used uh, there's another app that like records how much time you. It's called I don't know if it's called like Timer or something like that. Um, but the short story is, I guess what I'm getting at is like I didn't expect that I'd be able to make a game in two weeks, and I started making one and just 
scaled back the idea because I realized that if I wanted to do exactly what I thought I wanted to do, I would have not been able to finish up in time. Um, I would have like failed more or less. I wouldn't have released this. Um, so it's kind of a start, and I don't necessarily want to do these types of games for the rest of my life. But um, for me, it was just kind of like fun to learn a new engine, learn like the basics of coding, make some art, make some designs, tell a story, and there's three different endings. So a big part for me is like multiple, you know, multiple endings, um, you know, weaving uh, story trees and that sort of thing. So um, that's what I'm trying to do with my current game, and this just kind of showed me that that was possible. So that's all. Once I just realized like that it was actually possible for me to do this, like I didn't, I just, I, I knew that Flash games existed, I knew that HTML games existed, but I didn't know that like I could download a, some software, learn, like watch some tutorials, and start learning it, and then figure out how to do that like in a couple weeks, and like actually like have it be something that people could play, and then like tell people about it, and then they would play it and then tell me what they liked about it, or what they didn't like about it, or what didn't work. Um, it was just like, you could just make a game. You know, and it's like on the one hand, it's like that's extremely difficult, as we all know, but it's also like, we have the technology. <laughs> no, seriously, like, they have, you know, you can, like, any people are doing it, like, you can just, like, make a game. And, like, if you want to, whereas, like, that hasn't always been the case. You know, like, anybody can. Cool. Nice. Cool. 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 All right, and then our last show and tell will be JP. Cool. Uh, 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 I probably spent about three years working on it, uh, and I made it for myself and my wife to play primarily because I, I like two-player games. And I like games that are small, don't take up a lot of table space. You can play at a bar, or restaurant, uh, or just like on a trip. Um, it's called Airland at Sea. Uh, if you don't like war themes, don't worry. It's much more of like a classic card game feel. Uh, it's pretty fast to play. It's like 20 minutes. Um, the reason it does have a war theme is there's that famous expression, which is. Uh, uh, we lost the battle, but we won the war. So, like a like a major like theme of the game is sometimes you have to essentially like in poker like fold your position in order to come back stronger in a future round. Uh, and so, like trying to decide like can I actually win now? Should I try or should I should I quit while I'm you know early um, is a big part of the game. So, uh, you know you can find it online and stuff. And I'm pretty excited about it. It's about 15 bucks. Um, Where can you buy it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, any 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 like hobby game store should have it or online. Um, I almost said Amazon, but I don't really want to rep Amazon. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, find I, somewhere I else to buy it. Maybe. Buy but it, is it? Caps? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if Red Caps has it. I should go check. <laughs> uh, Adam, if you're watching, uh, I, I also have Adam. some copies myself. So Adam. if you if you want, I can sell it to you. So that's that's. Woo. It. that's Anyways, cool. that's it. Cool. Thank nice. You. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm GameDev Mig. You can find me on Twitter at GameDevMig. And a long time ago, back before the internet was cool with HTML5, I made <laughs> terrible web pages like this one with Flash <laughs> and yeah. HTML. And way back then, I was really excited about a game that was building for the 3DS, multi-angle shooter Star Cluster. It was a game, uh, I don't know if any of you remember it, 
but I had a lot of fun <laughs> because it basically took your, your ship Star Fox style, then switched it to top down, switched to the side view, and that was a lot of fun, but I got no money. And then development stopped because I got a different job. And that made me sad because I had a lot of assets. Like just random stuff that people that believed in it and really liked the idea, like helped push it forward. And I'm thinking, we have this profit jam coming out. I have all these assets for this thing that I never got to really share. So maybe it's time, maybe today's the day, maybe this is the time to bring back multi -shoot, angle shooter Starbuster, but smaller, mobile. Maybe focus on the mechanic instead of trying to talk to publishers every two seconds. And I thought, that's crazy, let's do it. So uh, what I'm going to be showing today is not all the way polished, beautiful art like this, but instead a silly little uh, fun <laughs> tiny demo that I can't decide, but I'm just going to maximize the play. Where in a very time pilot fashion, you can fly around, shoot bullets of some sort, and things explode. <laughs> and when things explode, I feel pretty happy about it. <laughs> it makes me happy. That guy's chasing me. Uh, and one of the things I had hoped to get to show you today was this crazy black box in the, the bottom is what I'm going to try to be using for my AI. Uh, because I like building things modularly. I like crazy architecture and being able to swap out values to change uh, behaviors. So, and that was part of the theme in the original Star Wars game was this idea of AI and what it means to be alive and uh, how you can fly around and shoot stuff. And how the different personality drives agents is something that's always inspired me as a developer. And from that, I was I took this idea of, hey, I'll make a time pilot clone that uses some of my Starbuster assets, and said, hey, maybe using all this knowledge I have, we can make something interesting in time. So, this is what I've been uh, working on a little bit. Let's see. Is there a I'm gonna let this run in the background. So uh, one of the things that I also worked on uh, is not just because, as you can see from the crazy aspect ratio, it's not specifically made to run on desktop. But I could, the, the thing that I was trying to really do was make sure that it was fun on your phone. So while this controls with a uh, arrow keys and spacebar, uh, I also have a si simultaneous control for touchscreen that lets you place your finger wherever you want on your device, shooting with the other. It's simple, but it worked. So that way, whether you're like weird left-handed like me, or right-handed like probably most of you, you can still fly around. And I don't know if any of you can see. What about always shoot? Is there ammo? Uh, right now, I haven't. You have as much ammo as you want. As uh, I'm going to be switching out the, the current tap, 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 make your thumb bleed version for the, the press and hold. Uh, just because uh, when I started doing this, the tapping was okay. Um, but I increased the bullet speed, decreased the, uh, the damage. So that way you could hit, get a couple shots on a guy and actually have to make a decision whether you're going to turn left or turn right. Um, and it just, it just felt better to have more more stuff around. So, yes, there will be that. And as far as like power-ups and cool stuff like that, I would love to see uh, later on down the line, like you touch down the middle here, and like it does some special effect, like maybe it's a dodge, maybe it does a aileron roll, or some sort of other uh, non-copyrighted uh, cool move that deflects bullets. Uh, crazy idea I had was to, if you want to reload that, you got to shake your device. I've been told not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea of doing like this and going mm -hmm. really appeals to me. We'll see. We'll see if better sense uh, is the better idea. 
Um, but what I, um, what I do hope to do with this is to come up with ways that are interesting for people to provide it money. Uh, because we've talked, we've talked a little bit about ads, and I would like to try to find a way to reframe them so that way that it's not necessarily about like, hey, give me my money, or hey, see this like obtrusive thing, but instead, like, you're playing this game, maybe you want the top score, and but there's another element to it that the player might care about, like if they want to explore this space. Because if you remember Time Pilots, you fly around in a a cloudy sky. Forevers and ever. Yeah. And while I have some fun cloud tech, cloud tech that might be not, not sure if you're doing. I had some fun cloud tech with gifts around here somewhere. Um, I'll just say it. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that and it's animated, and I'll find it later. <laughs> um, where I have like this cool tech to make lots of clouds, which is once again going back to the idea of like, hey, what tech do I just have around that I made for fun? Uh, it would be really cool to, to me to be able to explore a space and say, oh, I went, I played really well and I got to this, uh, this city. And if you think back to the old retro games, I think back to the, the small changes they made to the backgrounds that made you feel like you were someplace different and trying to harness that, that sort of energy and that idea. So let's say you've flown all the way to the city, you explode, as will inevitably happen, but you want to keep exploring. So maybe that's worth an incentivized continue. Uh, and you know, as the ship's engine becomes a little bit more mature, hopefully in the next week or so, I can offer things like IAP or even uh, artificially intelligent controlled wingmen that not only fight against you, but children. And I would really like to see the player be able to train their own AIs and fly with them, and then maybe even far off in the future, uh, get to have your AI join my AI and fly in this time pilot's retro game, and you just see a lot of cool stuff explode. So that's that's Starbuster uh, Pilot Wars. Please. Anyone that has a better name, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> I'd love to hear it. Every, every, the, the people that I've talked to so far hate my naming conventions, <laughs> and that's fine. Fire away. <laughs> cool. Any questions? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone want to squeeze one more quick show and tell on Tom? Go yeah. Fast. Yeah. We're actually down one speaker, so you have to, it's not. Oh, okay. beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, you don't want to use me? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Make some money? Never mind. Get tight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so my name is Tom, and I have been working on a solo project for the Profit Jam called Scattershot. Uh, Woo! I've been working on a game for four years. And instead of finishing it, I said, I'm going to work on something completely new. <laughs> uh, and yeah. it is very different uh, from the work we usually do at Gossamer. Um, it is a VR arcade kind of game uh, where it's basically like Brick Breaker meets like racquetball. And you're just smashing things and sucking up all the little shards uh, because I just wanted to break a lot of things uh, in my life right now. So that's what this <laughs> game is. Uh, so in the game, you're controlling. Um, you have this racket. You're hitting the ball. And you're breaking uh, all the bricks like you would in any brick breaker. Uh, and then when you do, uh, it explodes into a bunch of little shards. And you can suck up those shards. And that increases your multiplier and gives you higher scores. Um, I don't know if we have socks here. Oh, God. Uh, but everything is synced to the music, which is really cool. So all the flashing lights are synced to the music. Uh, and so it creates this really like zen, kind of like trance-like uh, gameplay experience. And I also wanted to show quickly, uh, I started with kind of this as my like primary testing environment. Uh, but I do have other environments as well. So I have like a really tall, it's wonderful one. Uh, and you hit oh things and it just kind of rains down all these shards on top of you. Uh, I have, and you can suck them all up and they're really pretty. 
Uh, I have like a giant box kind of shaped one. And so I have like five different environments that you're just going through and smashing. I wanted to go for like a Tetris effect kind of um, like gameplay loop uh, where it's very simple, single screen kind of thing, um, but you're just watching things explode and having a really good time. So that is my profit jam that I've made uh, these past few weeks. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. How do you do score? Uh, so score in terms of like uh, like gameplay strategy or like technical implementation. Uh, gameplay strategy. Gameplay. Uh, so in the game, uh, you are I think you get like a hundred points for every brick that you break, um, and then that goes and multiplies by your multiplier. Um, there, I think you get like five balls at the top there. I don't know if you can kind of see the scoreboard, um, but you're trying to get. Uh, yeah, there's been the interface up top. Uh, you have like five balls to clear the level, uh, and you have like a timer that if you get under the bonus time, then you get like another additional multiplier at the end. Um, and the number of balls you have left also multiplies on top of everything else. Uh, so it's all these systems kind of working together. A very simple gameplay mechanic of just like smashing as much as you can. Cool. Any other questions? Is there any way to get like two or three balls happening? Yes, uh, I don't have it here, but definitely um, we like the name Scattershot because yeah, you do it, and then there are some bricks that like break out the, the balls into like different ones that bounce all around, and you're kind of juggling between the different ones. Um, a lot of we're borrowing a lot of inspiration from all the other Brick Breaker classic games um, that have all the power ups and things like that. So, um, and yeah, I'm really playing around with all the different environments and creating exploding bricks and bricks that like move around and change size and kind of all these different things. Uh, so I have a lot of work to do uh, to launch a VR game uh, in the next, I guess, few weeks. But uh, I'm really excited because it's dramatically different from everything else we do um, in our normal work. So yeah. Your question about the, the VR store. Yes, yeah. there it's still all premium, right? You can't do any IAP stuff. Uh, so I mean, we're going to be launching this on Steam. Um, we already like bought the Steam page, and we're like, we wanted to commit, and so like this is happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're like ready to do that. Um, we really want to also launch on the Oculus Store as well. Um, I'm not sure we're registered as developers there, um, but I don't really know the process for certification or anything like that. Um, but I think you probably can do like free experiences or um, uh, like demo kind of things as well. So we'll be looking into that as well. Um, and I'm also not entirely sure. I want this to be a premium game, um, but I don't really know uh, how I want to handle it, sh it should be like early access or like just a standalone release or how I should do all that stuff right now. Um, so I'm still kind of planning the, the marketing and business side of things. Um, but definitely on Steam, maybe it's .io if that supports VR titles, I'm not really sure. Um, and then hopefully Oculus We'd love to be on the Oculus Quest, uh, so we're going to be reaching out and uh, trying to make some connections with Oculus as well. Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. That's the end of show and tell. Um, since our fearless leader, Sean, is not here, Nicole, who leads. Well, what are you going to do, do, do new people first? Yeah. Okay, cool. Never mind. So, um, no, <laughs> Sorry. I'll leave. so um, before Nicole does announcements, I want to plant a little question in your brain to think about while she's doing announcements. So a uh, question of the week this week, if you want to uh, introduce yourself and what you uh, what brings you here and what your favorite piece in Mario Maker or Mario Maker 2 is and why. Um, and so think about that while Nicole does announcements. Hi, everybody. I'm Sean Pierre. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm only looking at this thing once, so uh, this is as uh, much a surprise to me as it is to you. Hi, welcome to the Game Mechanics. Hi. 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 Uh, announcements. We're at Indie Hall. Yeah. 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 Uh, a series of boring slides. Tonight is Product Jam Check-In 2, mini talks on shipping games. Uh, I'm going to be doing a talk, and who else will be doing a talk? Julian? Yeah. And Kodoro. And Kodoro. They're going to be awesome. Uh, Profit Jam goals, what are your goals? I don't know. Think about them. Think about what your goals are. Reflect on your mistakes. On July 25th at 7 p.m., there's going to be a Spruce Street Harbor Park hangout, so it's probably going to rain. I guess. It's the last one. Sorry. Uh, August 1st is the 
championship deadline and the game showcase, so keep that date in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and then here's the code of conduct. Uh, be inclusive to everyone, respect the space, digital, and real world, use constructive criticism, and hold each other accountable. Uh, if you have any suggestions, there is a suggestion box on Slack. Uh, we're on Patreon, legamemechanics.com slash Patreon. Go give us money. We're on Slack and Discord. Go catch Pokemon on Discord. <laughs> <laughs> suck at it. Judy's amazing at it. <laughs> at what? At Pokemon. Catching them pokies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here to have fun, us. Uh, Woody would also like you to know that we're also on YouTube, even though Sean refuses to put a YouTube uh, icon yeah. on here. I paid him 600 bucks and he still doesn't know. Uh, so here's the fun part of this. <laughs> yeah. Woo! 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 <laughs> I don't know what tan means, that means tonight. Because tonight. Oh, so cool. <laughs> you know, tonight's two words. <laughs> yeah, tonight is two words. Yeah, I forgot. So Yellow, space. Welcome to my home page. Yeah. 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 Um, is this your talk? It's Sean O'Kane. Sean's got a lot of time. We there are two things I want you to think about. Your goal for Profit Jam and is Sean O'Kane. Okay? <laughs> Please pray for Sean. That's it. That's the last time. I really Sean hate this baby. Um, did you want me to go first? Or did you want... Oh, he's close to that. Oh, what the fuck? Even though his notes are just... Yeah, because it's a slide. Oh, did you see the notes? Yeah. Um, finally over. <laughs> um, did you want me to just go right into um, Well, we'll do thing, and then I'll, I'll do a little jam recap. And then okay, cool. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go to another tab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that baby. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, I did it myself. You did it. Oh, <laughs> it's an homage to do it. <laughs> oh, so do you want to do questions? Sure. Yeah. You want me to go? Yeah. No, I'll wait for you. Cool. Wait. So um, <laughs> if anybody wants to introduce themselves, uh, new people definitely encourage to introduce yourselves if uh, nobody's ever met you before, but anybody can answer. Um, I'll go first. My name is Woody. I come uh, to game mechanics to make weird shit. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make some weird shit, let's do it. Um, Mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah. I made this. <laughs> God knows what this is. Um, and my favorite piece in Mario Maker is probably uh, probably that little like spring that's like the two green things with the springy the in the middle, the little trampoline <laughs> thing. So you can like pick it up and like throw it. Yeah, the it trampoline. says trampoline when you put it down. Does it? Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trampoline then. And uh, I like that thing. That thing's yeah. cool. It's, yeah. a good it's an old school one. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else want to go? Hi, uh, my name's Dan. I have been here for like six years. Um, sort of Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, I am a web developer. Uh, I am interested in doing a couple projects, uh, like one game idea, something that's sort of like a game, but not quite. Um, so I'm here just to kind of hang out. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Good. Oh, oh right. Mario Maker. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I don't know why I stopped to say this, but I haven't actually played like Mario Maker. There's a guy on YouTube who does. Yeah. I like watching. Yeah. Uh, Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like a the guy who keeps showing up at the top of your feed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm a member at Indie Hall. Wait, we already have a Dan. We just. <laughs> How yeah. many hands are we and another Dan just walked in. Oh too. my God! Dan quote is full. All right, tall Dan. Or You're tall Dan. Dan. Okay. Yeah. Congrats on the promotion. Boys, it's all fine. So Perfect. Just keep adding. Yeah. Just put a superlative on there. Um, I don't. Uh, Good. I'll, I'll ostracize myself right now. I don't really play video games. That's okay. Now that it's changed. Neither do I. Yeah. Okay. Are you video games? I play. I play chess. That shit is a cool. Game. There's a uh, video game version of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. I, uh, so I, I guess my, I was, I've been looking for things to do with my nephew. 
And so I asked him, I was like, do you want to try and make a video game? And he was like, he's like, that sounds cool. Uh, so I invited him to come here tonight, and he couldn't. Uh, but I, I also want to make a thing for like training Tai Chi, like follow the dot on a screen, and like do it in a particular way that oh, that's uh, cool. maintains like Tai Chi principles. And so those two things are, I was like, it doesn't, I wasn't thinking of it as a game, but I was like, it would be a game. And so, yeah, so I'm interested Very cool. in making that too. Awesome. Cool. And then everybody marry me. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you should just make something up. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, my favorite thing is the, the car. First part. Yeah. The first part. <laughs> the first part. <laughs> the first part is the right answer. <laughs> All right, who else wants to go? Anyone else want to introduce themselves? Talk about Mario? No? Okay, go for it. What? What? What about? Oh, I'll do the jam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're standing up there. <laughs> he was standing up there with authority, too. He was like, ready. What? And he said he was waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, hey everyone. Um, welcome to uh, Mid Profit Jam. For those of you who um, are, at, are not aware of what we're doing right now, um, uh, Game Mechanics usually does a game jam every couple months. It's usually a two week jam at the, with a theme. At the end of that two weeks, we come here with a game good enough to share with each other and um, and and then move on. This is a little different. This is a little more hardcore. We do this every once. This is the second time we've done it. Um, we take two months to make a game that we not only uh, show each other, but we actually ship to the world and um, try to profit from, whether that's making money or just getting um, getting famous off of or whatever. Um, we're allowing uh, this time for you to define your own profit. Um, the main point is that you ship a game and get people outside of this room to play it and um, just get it out there, market it, think about all those things. So we, this is, um, we are what, six weeks into the two months, so this is really the final kind of um, thing and we've been trying to do a lot of like educational stuff along the way. Um, a month ago we had three speakers kind of on more production side. Um, tonight we have three speakers again about kind of more post-production side um, and we're going to have them do quick like 10 minute talks about a few things that we can learn and pool knowledge and just kind of like use this opportunity not just to experiment but also to learn from each other about how to actually ship games which is fun and important. So um, we will, uh, let me actually take, before we have the speakers up, um, let's get a report from the people jamming about where you guys are at and um, like the slide said earlier, we do, are, we're kind of asking you to find your own goals other than getting it out there. Is there anything else you're trying to do with your game? It could be trying to make some money. It could be trying to get a review. It could be trying to get a Kickstarter going. It could be anything that you want. So um, does anybody want to, one person per team, give a quick update about where they're at and what you're trying to do? And we'll just kind of go around like a minute apiece. Raise your hand if you're taking part in Prop Jam, by the way, just to get a, a quick, okay, cool. So some of you are out there who could speak. So, <laughs> so who wants to? Oh, yeah, what up? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, Steve. Hey, I'm Steve. I'm making a game about the uh, masterpiece film Point Break. It's <laughs> 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 the counter use of Patrick Swayze. It's going pretty well. Lamont's made me some really cool art. It's really sick. I wish he would tweet or show it more. <laughs> we'll get to that later. That's fine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the game's going pretty well, like all the stuff that needs to be there is in there. Uh, we just discovered recently... Wait, uh, like, Steve, move like... Yeah, yeah, okay, you're good. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, we discovered recently that the surfing math that we wrote, because it's actually a Point Break, the game HD remix, because we made a <laughs> demo version of it like four years ago. Uh, Camden discovered that uh, the math we wrote to make the surfing feel good makes no sense, and after about a minute of gameplay, you come to this weird molasses crawl. Uh, I don't know why that happens. <laughs> Maybe she does. We'll figure it out. Um, but everything is kind of in, so I want to put in like a Sonic the Hedgehog style special stage where you can do like 360s around the barrel of the wave. I remember that scene in the movie. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you don't know, the game is about you, you surf, because the movie is about surfing and robbing banks. So in the game, you play as Patrick Swayze and his gang of uh, robbers and you surf and then banks will appear in the wave and you have to surf through the banks to rob them. Yeah. Just like in the film. <laughs> <laughs> when can I play those? It's on the Philly Tron. You can play it right oh, now. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> so yeah, so my, my goal for profit was to um, uh, receive a, a cease and desist order from Fox <laughs> uh, and then do a, like a switcheroonie on them and be like, what if you bought the game instead? 
So that's still the game plan. <laughs> Secondary profit is that it's going on the Philly Tron, and we're going to try and take the Philly Tron to a cool indie arcade in Brooklyn, um, which is cool because then like I'll have a game on the arcade cabinet that I helped build, which is not something that I currently have. Uh, and all of the games that are on the Philly Tron will get to go to Brooklyn, which is like a, a community profit. Because I'm a giver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to talk about your game, if you can come up and stand where Steve stood, that'd be awesome. Who else? What is Judy? Judy! 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 Um, I'm working with a group of like 10, 11 other people. Some of them are sitting at that table over there. Yeah! Woo! So, our game is called Cauldron. It's a mobile infinite runner um, themed around witches. There's like six playable characters that you can unlock. Um, yeah, it's crazy, right? We're doing a lot. <laughs> so the character and the abilities and the collectibles that you pick up are all 2D, and the environment and hazards are 3D. And Le Monster 3 for that, so yay! I wish he would tweet more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Danny's doing some of the 2D art, and we have like a lot, of, a lot of people on our team, so many. And Celeste is doing producing, project managing, social media stuff. Yeah. And I'm doing some scripting for that, so that's uh, that's a lot. Um, so far in our game, we're ready to add sound to it. Our audio designers are learning FMOD, middleware, to do that. So I'm excited because I've never used it before. Um, yeah, we have most of the art assets. All we're waiting on is like UI art and actually getting the, the menu screens together and like the outer loop with like unlocking characters, upgrading stuff, purchasing stuff. We have a guy, um, Armand, that's doing like database server things, which is like out of my league, but I'm very impressed with that. So we're going to actually have like accounts and stuff. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's so much. But yeah, that's all I have to say about Cauldron. Wait, what's your problem? Woo! Cauldron? Yeah. So it's like the word like Cauldron? No, no, no. What's your, prof what's your profit? Oh, the profit. Oh, sorry. I was like, no, no, no. Um, she was like, cauldron. Don't <laughs> 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 well, well, earn one cauldron. <laughs> yeah, the profit is the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I, I guess you can say that. Um, for me, the profit is actually like shipping, like actually having something on the marketplace, which is something I'm not really good at having. Um, but I don't know if like y'all want to talk about it over there. Uh, about our profit? Or yeah, like what you want to get out of it. Run, R U N. We spelled cauldron wrong in that. Thing or draw your own thing? You can use this as a template or you can draw over it or make your own pose. Um, it's pretty free, but and basically uh, we're inviting people to make their own like wish on that. And it doesn't have to be in a style, it's just like for fun to use as a template. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was thinking if you're trying to get like some free content, just like. <laughs> we, well, I, I don't know. So let's we'll talk more about that because she's running the, the social media account. Hello, what was the question? Um, <laughs> I was just trying to see if you were using that to like make free content, like if, if you call it no. that game and it becomes an avatar. Um, <laughs> she's like, we are not in any more characters whatsoever. Um, <laughs> 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 that's fine. Just it. important. Um, that's important. Um, <laughs> um, that's important. 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 That's interactive with our social media since I'm the person who runs our social media, which is primarily just on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm trying to fix it right now because I don't know what happened. But um, it's more so just so people can have something to look forward to, something to have fun with, like, oh, I'm going to play Shizona and then I can play the game afterwards. Like, that sounds cool. Um, because people have been really excited with hearing our music, looking at the animations and the work in progress. So we decided to get kind of like almost give something for them to kind of do in a way until the game officially comes out. 
Yeah, Lamont has an early build on his phone if you want to um, accost yeah. him and check it <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thanks. Cool. Anybody else want to give an update? Yeah. I'll go. Yeah, I'll go. Um, All right. Well, I'm working on the brick uh, break variant, not the VR one, but the circular one. Um, <laughs> you know, we're taking it pretty casual. I think I'll just go first by saying our profit is, I think, just to get a game out there. You know, everything else is just toppings. Um, you know, we're doing all right. We've got. One level, which is actually better than it sounds because we've got a generator that will now just take that level and throw in whichever bricks you need or take them out, load in what power-ups or everything, so it's all that. So we'll have the one level that's actually all the levels. And yeah, I'm actually one of our programmers had to take a little bit of a break, so I'm doing a lot more of it, but yeah. That's awesome. Yay. More, yeah. more work. More work. <laughs> Called a Shaquapsana. Uh, 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 was it like, but they don't have that yeah. in my eyes. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> now you got oh, no thank you, Woody. <laughs> no, I didn't do it, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're gonna get called Shaquapsana. It's like the game like Quap uh, from back in the day, but applied to yoga. So you control the different <laughs> limbs of the body, trying to get into weird positions. Uh, I'm doing programming. Uh, nuka has been doing all the art. Uh, Dan Halma and Alex are doing all the sound and music. Uh, we got a lot to do for two weeks left. Um, see what happens. Uh, profit goals are to. I'm in the hole right now, so at least a break even <laughs> it would be <laughs> ideal. Uh, and then also it's like a pro fit this game. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Put it directly in front of the. <laughs> but, uh, so the people following at home can see it. Game is doing okay. We wake up sleeping in a hammock. Um, and time is still. I guess I'm not going to go way too far into this. You can walk around on a banana plantation. I like and the game. There's like bugs and I love stuff. This. And you can smack weeds. What's happening right now? Sounds like insects or sounds like insects. Five songs right now. I'm <laughs> doing pretty good in the song department. This is your weird song. Five songs, right? I know so much about your game, and like so, I want you to just tell everyone how good right. this bananas game is. I'm very bad at this. If you want to see the game, come see me after the talk. God, it's so good. Like, yes. It's got fishing, and uh, there's many games. Just let's see. It's good. What's it called? Yeah. Game's good. What's what? it called? It's not just me. Or it's, it's called not, it's not just me. me. It's called bananas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's, there's a couple Google people Google. doing uh, <laughs> Alex doing oh sound. God. He's doing a good job. Just <laughs> one. Uh, we have another guy doing art. And so it's all it's all coming what's together. What's your what's your promise? Oh, it's not just me. We're just gonna ship it. And it's gonna be it's gonna be great. We're gonna launch it. And that's the only goal that I have. Just launch it. Just launch it. My goal is to get someone on Twitch to play it. Yeah! Yeah! That's a good goal. How much money do you have to pay for 10 minutes? <laughs> have to God, buy them a dongle understand. so they can plug their phone into their <laughs> Twitch stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's holding up to the left. You should get a dull sponsorship like Super Monkey Ball. Yeah, yeah. 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 get a Super Monkey Ball sponsorship. Oh, yeah. Camera. Yeah. That would be sick. There we go. No pressure, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Holding sushi in my hands like We're making a game oh, that's called Paper Skater Maneuver, I don't know what else to call it. 
Um, but everything's made out of crafts and you skate. It's kind of like uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater meets Mario, but it's endless and uh, you collect things. And uh, not in this image, but you've got like a laser blaster where you, you could shoot targets that um, are not enemies. They're, they're targets that will like um, remove the hazards in front of you or like open the doors and stuff so that you can progress or even just like specialized ones. So if you shoot a target, it will drop like a ramp in front of you so you can reach the secret SD card or coins or whatever we've got going. We've got coins and SD cards. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, going pretty well. We're, we're pretty stressed out, actually. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it'll be good. Um, all the character animations are done now uh, for the second time. And uh, Tom is not here right now. He's the lead programmer on it, but he's home doing it right now. <laughs> uh, and uh, we've got a pretty streamlined like level editor, so like um, you know we can streamline our level editing. <laughs> 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 it will be done, and yeah. that is. Uh, Cool. We're gonna make some it's fun shit. Yeah, and, and Woody's is helping out with level editing too. So yeah, it's uh, Tom programming and uh, Woody on level editing, and I did the animation and uh, sound, which is currently silent. <laughs> also, there is no sound yet. <laughs> are there any arms? Yeah. Uh, the arms are not in that image, but the arms. The arms are DLC. <laughs> That's our profit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a thousand dollars. Download the game for free. The arms are gonna cost you. That's how they get it. It should be one arm and one leg. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that's what we're doing. All the tricks are impossible. I gotta get you gotta hit the key button. Play us. Yeah. Any more updates? Yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome. Then let's um. Get into talks. Nicole, do you want to? Yeah. Awesome. There's Nicole. You guys uh, already know her. Um, she is one half of Cardboard Fortress, who has published a bunch of analog games, done two successful Kickstarters, and is just a powerhouse of like tabletop. Oh no, you're at the end really of cool. my talk. No. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Do it. All right. Welcome, Nicole. Woo! Nicole. 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 Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, my name is Nicole, and I'm going to talk about promoting your game while keeping your sanity. Uh, I am one half Cardboard Fortress Games, as Jake just said. That's my husband, Anthony. He's very cute. Um, full disclosure, this is going to be mostly about tabletop games, because that's what I make. But I'm going to talk a lot about events that have both digital and tabletop games. Um, I'm a partner, so I wasn't doing all of this by myself, so I probably would have lost my mind. Um, I have a full-time job. So early costs that were associated with things like paying to submit our game to events, or shipping stuff, or having prototypes made, like or, or like flying to events and getting hotel rooms and stuff, that was all paid for by that. And I'm an extrovert, we'll be talking about at the end. Uh, so a little bit of background, uh, I started in video games about 11 years ago. Uh, Anthony and I made a tabletop game during a game jam, which we then won. And then we were like, okay, what do we do now? So uh, we finished up the game and polished it, then we promoted the shit out of it, uh, did a lot of marketing, networked, kickstarted it, and it got published. Uh, and from there we've actually made two more games that have been published. Uh, I want to talk about things that aren't Googleable. Uh, our first game was called Resistor, and at the end there's an underscore. And fun fact, if you just search Resistor without the underscore on Kickstarter, nothing came up. So we totally hosed ourselves, which was amazing. Um, so there are a fuck ton of events. Um, here's the definition of a fuck ton. It's 10 shitloads, or eight metric shit shitloads. Um, so events that are good for both digital and analog, uh, there's Boston Fig. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that one, Boston Festival of Indie Games. Um, yep. Their tabletop curation is amazing. Uh, it's a great place to network. It's actually where we found out about uh, the Boston Game Makers Guild, and we ended up making the Philly Game Makers Guild. Uh, we did a ton of networking there, it was great. Uh, MagFest is another good one. I can't super talk about MagFest. 
uh, we were in the tabletop section, but you could all, but I know that they have like a big digital section. One of the best things about doing indie stuff at MAGFest is you then get in the hotel block, which means you can be in the hotel at MAGFest, <laughs> which is great. If anyone has questions about MAGFest and the indie game thing, I have had a game in MAGFest, so it should be nice to Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, there's also Pixel Pop, which is an indie event that happens in St. Louis, which is a lot of fun. Uh, IndieCade, which I would say Sean was going to talk about, but he's not here, so I'll just say something uh, real quick. IndieCade, um, there is a fee to submit to it, but it does have like a great curation process. You get a lot of good feedback, and if you actually get into IndieCade, there are lots and lots of opportunities to network, and it's awesome. Uh, but it does cost money, and it is across the country, so that's a little bit tough. Um, there's also the PAX showcases. Uh, a bunch of the PAXs have, they, they have different ones. I think Boston does mobile showcases, maybe. Uh, South does tabletop showcases, so those are good things to like keep an eye out for. Um, our personal favorite was Indie Megaboot. Indie Megaboot was an awesome experience. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Uh, they're at PAX East, PAX West, and I think, um, not GDC. Are they at GDC? Yeah. Yeah, yeah GDC. Um, they have an incredible curation process, and the networking is amazing because not only are you in this intense situation with a bunch of awesome developers for four days, you also get added to an alumni email list, and they also have a Discord server. So you have like lots of opportunities. If you have any questions about anything, you can just go to the list, and there's lots of people who have had like tons of experience who will help you out, and it was just, it was awesome. We ended up making a group called the Tabletop Co-op out of it, our experience in the Indie Mega Booth, and that's been going on for like, we've had that running for five years now, and I, I, I can't recommend that one enough. Um, tabletop exclusives, uh, Gen Con and Origins are good, but they're big, so you tend to get lost in those. I, I recommend just going to those, and even if you can't promote your game, like, they have like smaller events where you can promote your game within the con. Uh, if you do tabletop, Unpub and Metatopia are awesome for doing, for like getting your prototypes played and also networking. There's lots of publishers at both of those events. Um, there's also uh, BGG, which is Board Game Geek. They have a big event and they have an attached event called Tabletop Network, which is sort of like how like PAX Dev is connected to PAX West. So it's like two days of talks and then connected to a convention. And then Protospiel, which is like Unpub and Metatopia. Uh, so for promoting, I would say cater to your specific needs. Like if you're promote, if you're if you've got like a mobile game, you're obviously not gonna want to talk to I don't know, Steam. I don't know anything about video games. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, like we've had we've had three games published, and we were like when we pitch the publishers, we try to like research that publisher before we like show them a game. So like. We're not going to show them a deck builder if they've got like eight deck builders that they've already made. So you just like you want to know your stuff. Um, don't be afraid to ask for advice or help, but remember to pay it forward. We asked so many people so many questions, and they were all so nice. Like, just don't ever be afraid to ask people questions because they were you once, and they usually remember it, or they're assholes that they want to talk to anyone. Um, I would say start a mailing list, especially if you're going to be going to events, um, and use your networks. Uh, networking, networking can be really hard. Uh, I'm going to talk about that with uh, when I talk about the extrovert stuff. It's really hard to be on all the time, especially at events if you're at like a four-day event and you have to be nice to everybody and be pleasant. And you know, maybe you're a nice person, but you don't want to be a nice person for like ten straight hours. It's really, really hard. But it's difficult. It's difficult, but it's necessary. And people can vibe it when you're authentic and genuine. So just be yourself. Uh, the community is small, so the networking is valuable, especially in, in board games. Like, if a person is an asshole, everybody knows that person is an asshole, and that person's going to get blacklisted. Uh, so I'm being an extrovert. Uh, Jake and I had a long conversation about this. So part of, part of promoting your game and going to events, it's, and I, I do most of this stuff, it's, you know, planning your planning your travel, planning your hotel, trying to get there, submitting your event, and it's also, I forgot to talk about reviews, sorry. <laughs> Somebody mentioned reviews and I was like, shit, I forgot to talk about, you talked about it with that review, like, uh, yeah. Um, but it's, it's really, all that stuff takes a lot of energy and it's all behind the scenes stuff. And then when you finally go to the event, you're like promoting your game, you're talking to people, and that can be 
that can be really draining. So like, don't forget to be nice to yourself. It doesn't matter how much of an extrovert you are, like you're gonna get worn out. So remember to take breaks, even if it's just to go get people food, even if it's to go cry in the bathroom, like you can't be on all the time and that's okay. Um, that's it. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at CD4. My email address is cardboardfortressgames.gmail.com. Um, and obviously all this stuff is like way out of the scope of what you guys are doing for Profit Jam, but this is just stuff for you to think about down the road with like events and stuff. Um, does anybody have any questions? Jake? Um, how, like, I, I mean, I feel like at a certain point you have a little bit of critical mass with like knowing people, so it's a little easier, but like how long were you going to conferences when you felt like you just didn't know anybody and you were just trying it? and beating your head against the wall. Um, I mean? With Resistor, so we made Resistor in August of 2013, and we didn't kickstart Resistor until like <coughs> March of 2015. So we spent like a full year and a half. And it was like really overwhelming. Like when we started out, we really felt like we didn't know anybody, but like people would be like, oh, you know, go talk to my friend so-and-so. And we would be like, okay, cool. And we would find that person at convention. It would be like the president of some big company. And we'd be like, ah. Uh, you know, somebody sent us to talk to you and they would be super nice to us. Like everybody was just so nice and they were constantly like, if they didn't know the answer to what we needed, they were constantly introducing us to other people who might know the answer that we needed. So I like, I think like critical mass was probably, I mean not critical mass, but like once we got into any negatives like a year later, that was the point at which things really started to click. That was when it was like, you know, we know a bunch of people here or we know of a bunch of people here and like that that was when I felt like things really started to be like smooth. That was like a full year of promoting our game. So it's tough. Yeah. Do you have any cool Twitter advice for uh, engaging the Twitter community? I'm so bad at Twitter. Um, I don't know. Ask questions. Like like how Woody was like, this is how I get people engaged. I ask a question that I want everybody to think about. Like ask questions that get people talking to you. I think that that's the best way to do it. Because that's how we've seen a lot of people in the board game community like build up their Twitter followership. Followhood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, I'm sorry. No, that, that was right. <laughs> Followhood. Yeah. Following us. Yeah. What about building a mailing list? Like ways to do that? Oh, uh, so we just had MailChimp and MailChimp works offline. So if you like set it up on your iPad or your phone or whatever, people can just like give you their mailing address or you can do the fun game of people write down their email address and you're like, yeah, I can't read this. <laughs> yeah, no. For sure, mm -hmm. and then you're putting in like 50 emails that are maybe right. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But how uh, do you get them to like write, give their email in the first place, and without being too uh, off-putting? Um, we usually incentivize people to play the game and to give us their information by like giving them something, so like pins or candy or high five. I actually, I'm really bad at the mailing list. We haven't like kept it up for like five years, so. <laughs> I just hear that you should have a mailing list. <laughs> so, pins are good though. Cool. Yes, yeah, huh? I wanted to like ask or add on to that because we also tried to do a mailing list and then just kind of gave up <laughs> because there we only have like a really small limited amount of bandwidth for like how much we can spend on doing social media and like community engagement. Have you found that there's like if it's either Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or the mailing list that is, is best for engaging with your audience? Um, I think Instagram has been the most fun. Instagram and Twitter have been more fun. Like we tried to make a website and that we just couldn't keep up yeah. with how much stuff we wanted to share. So now it just looks like shit. Yeah. And it's better to not have one than yeah. to not update one. Um, yeah, the mailing list, I mean, if you have something to say consistently that isn't asking for something, then I would say a mailing list is really fun. But I think, I mean, I think social media is perfectly fine. I think if you put stuff on Instagram, like even if it's like, look at what I'm playing, look at what my cute cat's doing, like people like dumb shit. Yeah? Has anything changed that you would say that you've done or you've done differently that's worked better than what worked for Resistor in the past or your future games like Laser Riders and all that fun stuff? Um, it's hard to say because all three experiences were so different. Like with Resistor, we did everything ourselves and then put it on Kickstarter and then a publisher approached us while it was on Kickstarter. And then Laser Riders like got signed immediately, so a publisher did all of that for us. And then with Centipede, 
the publisher came to us and said, hey, we have all these party licenses, do you want to make one? <laughs> so it was like three completely bizarrely different, but the two times that we did it ourselves, we just been laser writers, we made our games on Googleable, so we did a really good job with that. I would say make your game Googleable. It's the only thing that I would say. <laughs> Yeah, we only make analog games. Sorry. <laughs> He's like, thanks again. Can I ask a question off of Jake's question? He yeah. was he was kind of asking. Question. Oh, it was Jake's question. Yeah, yeah. oh, I'm going to ask a new question then. <laughs> it has nothing to do with Jake's question. Um, talking about um, you know reaching sort of a critical mass of like. Obviously now you feel like you have a ton of connections. Um, how much of the community that you had built here through um, Game Makers Guild and, and through PGM was kind of springboarded into when you went to those events, kind of uh, communicating with people beforehand to say, hey, do you know anybody that's going to be at these events? And then taking that information and trying to set up meetings. Can you talk about how the connections that are made at home translate into the connections that are made yeah, at I these mean, events and stuff like that. Yeah, one of the, like the story that I was telling, one of the best connections we made was Jason Tagmeyer, who makes board games. He's like one of the bigger board game designers in the area. I actually went to high school with him, which is so weird. And then I cool. ran into him in an IGDA meeting. <laughs> and I was like, I don't understand what's happening. Uh, but he was the one who said, he said, hey, talk to my friend Christopher Bedell. And he turned out to be the president of Greater Than Games. Which like he helped give us advice on like things to do with resistor, but then they also ended up signing laser riders. So that was oh, one cool. of the situations where you know that ended up that, that was awesome. And like Tristan has helped me also. She's helped me like connect with people. And I, I would say a lot. Th there's been a lot of building off of our home community. Okay, cool. And then as a result of like everything that we did at Philly Game Mechanics, and then what we learned at Boston, we ended up making the Game Makers Guild. So it's all been like circular. I see. Cool. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. <laughs> totally different question, not Jake's question. <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Jake. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so next we have Julian. Um, Julian works at Gossamer for a while, working on marketing for Soul, and now works with Screenwave. It does. Um, yes. Uh, like managing uh, uh, like uh, players and uh, streamers and now publishing like games. Right. So we're going to talk about social media. It's okay. No. It's definitely a video. It's still a play. There's buttons and everything. Okay. Let's see. the presentation but I can see the notes uh, on my oh, side. You gotta down. you gotta jump, do a drop down double right screen. So the yeah you don't mirror you yeah, gotta or yeah are you standing presenter view monitor settings. <laughs> right? Oh. You do your monitor settings. You gotta do the monitor settings you can't do that. Yeah. You have to <laughs> expand. Yeah you shouldn't listen to me I'm sorry. Expand it. <laughs> if you know anything from my talk you should not listen. Expand it? So like, no, you were like, like, like just he you know, has it only as one. You go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now you got a display settings probably. Set up multiple monitors. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. 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 Scroll down. Give me a little. No, no, no. Any other way. Right oh, side. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thanks, man. Nice. All right, so at TMG a few weeks ago, I did, uh, we had a little panel, and I did like a community management panel. I didn't know how to do that. So I read off my phone, my notes, and then just projected my screen onto the display. The whole panel, I just read off my phone. I looked like a dweeb. Um, so thank you, team. Uh, anyway, so we're going to talk about some marketing tips. Um, I'm by no means a professional marketer or like think I'm a social media guru, uh, but I think about it a lot. And I think if you think about anything a lot, you'll just find some better uh, insight and, and tips and tricks there. So I hope they can share some of that stuff. Um, we're going to talk about some tips for getting the groundwork in place for some good marketing. Uh, it's, it's an important skill to kind of uh, master and get used to. Uh, marketing as a term usually carries like this weird like negative connotation. Um, but it's important nonetheless and marketing can be done in a way where it's not intrusive uh, and it's not treating people like numbers and, and instead it's, it's storytelling. So I have a little note about that at the bottom. Um, Building a brand is, is establishing a voice. It's generating lots of content for digital promo. Um, it's leveraging keywords and, and being very concise in your Twitter posts. Uh, and it's being involved with communities and, and sharing content that you would like and you appreciate and you pull inspiration from. Um, I think marketing and just being online is really cool because you can learn from your competitors uh, and you can also support creators who are in your network um, and people who you know you're pulling inspiration from. So these are some of the things I'm going to go over. Uh, we'll talk about like setting up your game for success. I think there's a lot of confusion in, in, or like there's a workflow to marketing that I think if you just try to hop into it, you'll be like, oh shit, I need a description, I need key art. Um, but if you think about that beforehand, you can build a nice folder of marketing materials to then be able to drop into your Twitter and on your Steam page and on the mobile page. Um, so we'll talk a little bit of like branding and what I think is just like like storytelling is like good marketing practice. Uh, organic marketing on social media, um, a little bit about Discord and some of the streaming platforms, um, and the content and release schedule. I guess uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk about uh, in this as well, just like briefly. Uh, just some things that I've learned over the past couple months. Um, <laughs> so I'm Julian. Uh, video games are sick, right? So I went, to, I went to Temple for media studies and production. I did a lot of video and audio editing. Um, but we learned about writing and analyzing your audience. Uh, but it was never marketing speak. I didn't go for school for marketing. Um, I wanted to, to work in TV networks, doing like video spots and running like social media programs. Um, and that just slowly turned into me realizing that I need to get better at that stuff. So I started working in agencies. I got lucky to find an agency. I did three stints in agencies. Uh, and in the middle of that, I was working with Brian on disco ships for a hot second. I was working with Tom and Gossamer Games on Soul, which is really cool. And all of those opportunities happened from this community right here. Um, so you know, even having my job right now, which is like a full-time job, it's, it's purely because of this community. So. Uh, you know, thanks, thanks to everyone for like, coming up and showing up and doing that thing because it's really important for everyone to build an industry. Um, so currently I work at Streamwave Media. Uh, I'm, I'm their community manager and game marketing associate is the other half of my title. Um, Streamwave Media is this weird company. They're a tech company that does, uh, for the past like maybe like eight or ten years, they've managed a large creator network. It's called an MCN. It's a multi-channel network. Um, MCNs, other than Screened Media, are like Viacom, and Machinima, and um, companies like that that are usually venture capitalist funded, but luckily Screened Media is, is self-funded. Uh, so that makes us an indie uh, MCN to, to a point, which I think is cool. Um, Screened Media, within the last two years, brought user words and meme machine to Steam and mobile devices. I didn't have a lot of experience playing those. I still don't. Uh, but that was their first like kind of foray into game publishing. Uh, this month we released Evil Island on Nintendo Switch and Steam. Well, um, it's, it's, uh, it's it was their biggest uh, budget indie game, um, and I hopped into the cycle about three months ago, which is very late to kind of like build uh, you know your marketing team. Uh, but we're learning a lot for sure, and and it, it's not the same as user words and new machine were for that team. Um, so we're, we're having a, a lot of fun, but it, it's an awesome learning experience for the company. So uh, 
Eagle Island, it's like a falconry inspired roguelite. You're this boy with an owl and you like throw it at enemies and you get combos and it's a platformer, so it's really tight. Um, but anyway, not about uh, So setting groundwork, this is a lot of stuff that I think is important and things that I've seen um, in like the cycles that I've been involved with that happen over and over and over again. Um, so when you're thinking about like this is all in the context of the profit jam. I think you know if we're launching on the first or by the first, uh, there's not a lot of time to do this stuff if you haven't done this stuff. Um, what Butter Rack Studios is that your studio name? That's a great Twitter account, by the way, for for being like early, like nice job. Um, so I think when you're thinking about like groundwork for marketing progression, uh, game design can start inspiring that marketing copy. Um, let's see. Building marketing assets as early as you can uh, is really important, right? It's difficult, though, to get art and things like that early uh, onto your social profiles when you're in early development. So as your game design is progressing, I think it's important to think of like relevant textures and solid colors and anything that might be able to, to be placeholder for, for your social profiles so that you can start sharing content um, instantly. You want to think about uh, you know, all the various creative spots that are going to come up, like your logo on your Twitter account and the key art and the stuff that you're going to share in your next five posts, they're all going to need or would better uh, benefit from a nice little content piece. So you want pics and videos and GIFs and all this stuff. Um, turning ideas that are happening in the game design discussion into one sentence concise Tweets and things like that is a really great practice to have, um, and it's effective way. It's an effective way of, of getting things online early game. Um, so yeah, when you're talking about game design, think about like what the description of your game is. Think about like maybe what genre your game is falling in. Uh, the one sentence pitch is going to be really useful if everyone can kind of be on the same page with that early, um, especially if you have you know a team. Um, like the first thing I did with Bananas, which is the only thing I did with Bananas, was make bananasthegame at gmail.com. Uh, so <laughs> using that email address to, to get ready to build your account and, and do some stuff like that is, is important, really. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about landing page and, of course, like social media stuff. Uh, but it's important to know in the workflow, we'll talk about call to actions too, in the workflow, like, you want everyone to go to your landing page. That's your website, especially with the digital product that people can download. Um, so there are some resources to making really simple landing pages. They don't have to be anything extravagant at all, uh, like WordPress, Squarespace, Persona. Um, that's what we did the disco sh ship site in, which was like super, super basic. And UCraft is what I built my personal site in, which is really easy. It's just a picture of me and some text. Um, and it already has transitions built in. Like there's ways to make it easy to make a website. <coughs> Um, so social media pages, depends what you're into. I think it's safe to say that you should hit all platforms if you can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram um, are kind of like the standards, but I think people forget about Pinterest and Tumblr uh, when, you're, when you're losing a lot of like visual stuff. Um, especially if you are on Instagram, uh, a lot of that, there are some settings that you can mess with on Instagram to push that stuff to Pinterest. And Pinterest is a really great, great area where people find inspiration for game stuff. Um, so you should, you know, share there too. Uh, storytelling and early development, I think, is a, is like a controversial, like, like in the group. I feel like it would it would be a tense conversation um, because sometimes an artist doesn't want their art being shown online early. Uh, sometimes a game doesn't doesn't want to discuss what the game is until they hash it out themselves. Um, I err on the side of the more of the storytelling approach where I think it's really valuable to show the first iteration of a character and then what it looks like you know, in three weeks, especially if uh, people are latching on and they're following and they want that update anyway. Um, when I was working in agencies and we signed a client, we would always do this thing where we looked at their competitors uh, and then think about like, what do their competitors do? Where do their competitors hang out and all that stuff. So I think if you're making a game like Bananas, you might look into games like Stardew Valley and games like Animal Crossing, um, where where you know it's like idle clicker, casual, uh, and you want to see how their audiences are interacting. You want to see how they are sharing content, um, and then of course, you know, getting involved in communities. Just always on on your personal time, I think is helpful. 
there are really great Discord communities out there. Of course, like the indie game subreddits are pretty pretty heavy with resources and good for sharing. And then being involved in like Twitch chats uh, before you go to bed and you're like, or, you know, just laying there and bored or whatever is is helpful because you're building networks online. Um, and that's that. Uh, so who is your audience? It was always the first question we would talk about when we were talking about like writing for people in school. Uh, but I think in game dev, it's more about what is your product and then who is your audience. You've got to really dial in on what you're making to really understand who it's going to be for. Um, so look at your game and think of competing games. Poke around the genre or art, art style. So if you're making a pixel art game, you look for other pixel art games and see how they're sharing content just so you can pull inspiration into your own posts and how you should be sharing your own content. Um, I'll talk about list building a little bit too, because that's just something that's always happening when I'm in thinking about marketing, when I'm in my like marketing mode. Uh, list building is, is really crucial because one day you'll have a press release, one day you'll have influencers that you want to reach out to, and if you have a list that you've been making over the past couple of weeks that have 15 different people on it, uh, you can make that kind of like communication process really, really uh, just easier. Um, so this is just, I don't even know if this fact is real anymore. 25% uh, 20, of iOS indie devs make over $30,000 in their lifetime. That's scary, dude. So if you're thinking about profiting from money, that's not a lot. And I'm, and I'm just saying, like, keep making little projects because they'll build up on top of each other. Um, but also that, you know, uh, marketing is important in setting that success apart from just being lumped into the games that do, like, a little bit. You know, I think a lot of your development conversation should surround marketing. Um, I always use this silly like analogy, I guess, but if we're making indie games, they're basically like these little parties that we're throwing. And uh, where we're, you know, if you don't invite people to your party, they're not gonna come, they're not gonna have a good time. Dude. So you wanna make sure to put in the energy uh, to get people to come to your party. Um, at the bottom, so there's, I think with marketing, a lot of people think, you know, budget and campaign and like ad spend uh, and things like that. But marketing doesn't have to be about dollars. You don't have to put dollar amounts behind your campaigns. Uh, you just really have to put time. It takes a lot of time to be on Twitter and promote communities and build your own community. Um, just as much time as it takes to, to build your system or develop an animation or whatever you're doing. Um, so spend time on your list building and community searching to kind of uh, set yourself up for those processes when they're going to happen. Um, if anyone wants to talk about paid ads and campaigns, you can do that later. They're, they have their pros, um, but if we're not throwing down big ad budgets, then like, fuck up, you know? Um, <laughs> promotional yeah. materials, so just moving into before we get ready on social media, uh, there's a lot that we can do about creating content. The cool thing about content creation is that as long as it's edited and not offensive, it's almost always doing more benefit than it is harm. Um, so you'll find yourself looking for a bunch of different things to put online. You can create content from early in the conversation, uh, but before you do so, I recommend laying down, you know, like, like your logo and your horizontal key art and your concept art and putting that on one place in one Google Drive so that you can pull from later um, and, and use in different posts. Let's see. Um, as development progresses, um, think about capturing the process and telling the story of your project. I think a good practice for online is producing content to an extent, but also uh, just taking an organic approach by offering the like in the room sort of posts when something happens and everyone's really excited about it, um, it's way easier to share something online that everyone's excited about. So if something happens in your design process that really swings the project, that's a really great tweet. Um, when we're talking about what, sort, what sorts of content to create, uh, you know, I'm thinking about screenshots and GIFs and videos. Um, videos can be working in the office, they can be three seconds, they can be a minute long. Um, trailers, of course, are super important. And, and that's, you know, every game should have at least one launch trailer. Um, but you can host interviews in your room and you can do devlogs. Um, you can use OBS to capture whatever you're doing at that moment uh, and then talk about it later on Twitter. And that's all just good content. It just takes a little bit of, of pre-production planning also. Um, when we talk about like print content, 
Uh, that's more of like the text stuff that people read and they're supposed to digest to get whatever your game's about. Um, so descriptions, press releases, of course, are a little more on the technical side of writing. Um, but press releases are basically there for press to copy and paste into their article so that they can just push it on the website. Um, list building, again, is, it's pretty important. As if you're always building a list for press outlets and Twitter contacts, you're gonna be able to use that whenever you find that you need that asset. Um, and instead of being like, oh shit, I have a press release, I gotta send it to like whoever I can find, you can already reference some lists that you've been building, and it's really easy to just create a Google sheet and keep track of that stuff. Um, if you can put yourself in a position to get ahead of social media and content, you can spend the rest of your time making these lists and uh, making, you know, drafting press releases and stuff like that. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about later just like a good Twitter practice, which is, uh, which is locking yourself in a room and writing 50 tweets. Um, crying a little bit, that's okay. Um, but we'll talk about that later. So this is a really cool video that I found from the Ooblets dev team today while I was researching uh, just like what devlog stuff is, because I don't really deal with that, right? But they have this really cool YouTube video. It has 20,000 views. It says attempts at making a devlog. Um, and I was just like, what is that? Oh, let's just make sure I have
which can be screenshots and gifts and, and quotes from your friends and anything like that. Um, let's look at what I think is a super strong landing page. This is the Messenger uh, being published by Devolver Digital. The Messenger's cool because it's a total brand ready landing page. Um, where are the buttons? Oh, there are the buttons. <laughs> so this is actually, this is interesting. That's showing the mobile view. That's not what the desktop view is. But if I can take away anything that I think is super effective about this landing page, it's that you get brand ready key art. You got some nice messaging at the top where you can click on that stuff. But usually <laughs> on the desktop, uh, these buttons are just lined across the bottom. It's literally everything you would need to go to Switch, PlayStation, Steam, God, well, you know, like anything like that. And then you go down, and the next thing you see is trailer, supporting content, lots of it, lots of reviews. And then, of course, your awards if you have those. And you go to shows, and this is the, probably the best friend who's just writing this thing. Um, <laughs> Whoa. But anyway, and they have music. So, you know, if you're looking for like landing page inspiration, I think this is a really strong one. I want to go back. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like more social media stuff. Uh, so there's a lot to think about with social media. I, the most important thing is that it's, it's a fun time. We're all on Twitter and we're here to laugh, not cry. So like, like <laughs> a lot of people say, I don't know how to tweet. Uh, some people can cry on Twitter too. Uh, a lot of people say, I don't know how to tweet. I don't know how to like write posts. I don't know what to do. Um, and I think what I was leaning into earlier is that uh, if you make it a group effort to sit down and, and have a creative like closed session where you, you talk about drafting tweets for 50, you know, for like 50 or 100 tweets or whatever, uh, it's a good way to kind of get your content rolling. Um, the way we did it with Eagle Island is, is you know, and this was a learning experience too. Uh, we sat in a room and we had six call to actions and then we were like, all right, let's just make a lot of Twitters, you know, and, and each one is gonna go to a rotating call to action. Um, and then you can kind of save these messages in a bunch of different ways. And some posts stick better than others, and some posts you don't end up using. Um, but the point is that you have a database of content to reach into, to tweet, uh, you know, once a day or three times a week, whatever you might be doing. Um, social media is really effective across all platforms, um, but pay attention to where your community forms. I think there uh, is a great Twitter presence um, for game stuff. But I think that Twitter presence for game stuff is a lot of game developers. So that's where that, that group of people might hang out. Um, I think there's a big presence on Facebook too. Um, but Facebook is maybe for the people who haven't moved into Twitter and Instagram yet. So maybe they're like behind on the social media friends, you know? <laughs> um, social media is such a good time. Please share your content. It's our <laughs> <laughs> One thing uh, I think is like a great just like social practice to have is not being stingy with your retweets and likes, y'all. So especially great content from lesser known accounts, people really love when you share that stuff because it just shows that you're like like into the idea of this person creating and you want to help do your part in and having more people see it. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're sharing a retweet from like, uh, what's a big Twitter account? You know, you get it. It's, it's less than like a really Microsoft. Account. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Famous Twitter press. <laughs> Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk, yeah. When Tony Hawk hits that 900, that's less impressive than like the little kid next door getting on that. Um, anyway, for social media stuff, there's a bunch of different content ideas you can have. Uh, and a lot of that stuff is, is like pre production planning, screenshots, GIFs, videos, and memes. Um, but also sharing the thought process is kind of like an in the moment tweet. Uh, and then reacting off of whatever's happening on Twitter at the moment is, is you know, that's like time sensitive and fun too. Like when Nintendo Switch Lite got announced, um, we threw up a GIF of our game on a Nintendo Switch Lite really quick and we're able to hit that, that like first wave of interest online and it performed a little better than the other tweets. Um, when you're thinking about the copy that you're gonna put in your tweets, all the text and stuff, uh, you know, take a few hours to write this stuff beforehand. I said that a bunch already. Um, you can also think of branded hashtags. It's a little more like a, a marketing tactic, but everyone does it anyway, even if you don't think of it as a branded hashtag. Um, so for like bananas, you, we might do like hashtag go bananas. Brian, what do you think? Speaking at other competitors, I think it's like super effective when you're looking at like how do I want to talk about my game. 
Um, I find a lot of inspiration from Devolver um, and seeing how they talk about all their great projects. They have a huge following, so they get great engagement no matter what. Uh, but that stuff is definitely inspiring how I'm like, setting my tone and how I'm writing online. Um, redundancy, I think, is a point about social media that not a lot of people will talk about. I think I get sad when I look at Screw With Media's Twitter account, and it's my fault, that it's all Eagle Island posts. Or, yeah, that's the Eagle Island. <laughs> well, like, I, I want, there should be very uh, kind of stuff in your layout, you know, uh, like YouTube, then I'll share YouTube stuff if I'm sharing a lot of game related stuff. I'll share like Twitter algorithm changes and, and share other creators, you know, game dev progress, um, just so it's not all of your content because uh, that the internet should be about, you know, right, I mean, that's an opinion, but the internet should be about sharing and, and I think people appreciate that too. Um, we're in a u unique position where we are creators, even if you feel in this room that you don't like have a really large skill set or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of people online who feel lesser than that, and you can inspire them, even if your outreach is really small or your like your progress is really tiny. Um, so I think when you're on Twitter, you should be trying to like not educate, but inspiring creators if you can by sharing whatever you're really passionate about. Um, there are a bunch of great hashtags to use in Twitter. Uh, like indie game, um, <laughs> hashtag indie game is solid. Hashtag, hashtag banana. Game, right? hashtag Yo, Brian, what do you think of that? <laughs> 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 yeah, so, um, I think when there's a lot of people in indie development do hashtag game dev, and their tweets perform well, their posts perform well, but it's it's tailored for your game development audience because your regular consumer isn't looking at hashtag game dev. They you know because they don't even know how games are made. You know. Hashtag um, this has bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag eat that bug. That's a good um, anyway, list building is uh, not that cool, but it helps you keep your yourself organized and gets you ready for when you're in, in the heat of you know content pushing. Um, preparing a press release while you are reviewing, you know, kind of sets you up to send that press release to a bunch of different review sources. I've already mentioned that. Um, an easy way to do that, I think, is by going to Metacritic. If you find those games that you're, you're competing with, per se, uh, you can look at reviewers who have reviewed you know, Stardew Valley and then be like, this guy from IGN likes this sort of game. Go so check gonna, out Bananas. You know, like, oh, if you love Stardew Valley, get rid of this dog. You're going to have your mind blown. And then you hit him with a press release. And they're more likely to turn that press release into an article uh, because they like that sort of content. And you already know that. It's not like a blind shot in the dust. Um, so some of the practices I do is when I, when I see an article that I think someone uh, might like an Eagle Island related article, I just like email it to myself and I'll reference that later. Um, when I'm online and I'm browsing Twitch and YouTube and I'm finding creators who are playing indie games and games like Celeste and Dead Cells and Rogue Legacy or whatever, um, I'm going to know which creators those are so that when I want to do another Eagle Island push or when the office is ready to do that, we have a little bit of a, a new sort of creator batch to reach out to. Um, a big one, I think, on YouTube, uh, I'm really new to the YouTube world, but it, it's very much a part of like my office right now, so I'm learning a lot. Um, there are so many channels that share game trailers. And if you make a list of channels that share game trailers, you can find those emails, email them your game, game trailer, and you might be able to get your game trailer on a, a channel that already has 150,000 subs. Um, those creators and those press reviewers are all itching for content and they're all living in constant fear of not recording the next big thing. So <laughs> even if your game is garbage, if you have a nice website and a really like well thought out Twitter community or you know just like Twitter page, you're more likely to set yourself up for a review from a creator or a press app. Um, and joining communities is just like a good time. Uh, that's where a lot of the news gets shared first before it goes viral when you get it. Um, one of my favorite communities I joined recently is this one on Twitter it's called Wholesome Freaking Games. Um, oh my god. It's a very, you know, like this, I think I consider this a small Twitter following in the grand scheme of things. Um, nice. Link to the finish follows. Yeah, Link to the finish bro. Uh, but anyway, so Wholesome Games just like shares wholesome content. They just started this Steam Curator page. You know I'm trying to get Eagle Island. You know, um, 
but also they just like have really good content. Uh, it doesn't get the biggest engagement, but like it's it's exactly where I want to be hanging out if I'm making a game like Bananas or if anyone's making a really wholesome game. Um, and, and that type of stuff. This I brought this up because they have. Oh, it's a link tree now. That used to be a Discord link, but anyway, they have a really great Discord that you can join. And you're one step closer to like the core of that network, and you're one step closer to like getting your wholesome game shared with the wholesome game community, um, which I think is uh, a, a strong thing to kind of go for. Two lumps of bread. <laughs> one a gallon of skim milk. <laughs> one bag of paddle chips. One chocolate milk pop. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate milk chips. <laughs> How did you get my shopping list? <laughs> <laughs> this is just an example of uh, how I make lists. So I take the name, and I take their email, and I take the link to whatever website they're on. Um, Smellyboy doesn't shower at gmail.com. You got this, .com. <laughs> uh, also, the world's pretty big. It's way bigger than Philly, and it's way bigger than the USA. So what? you can, especially with the social media stuff, you can reach any uh, region in the world. So um, spend time, you know, with the French streamers and go into Google Translate and say, "Hey, what's up?" and learn how to say, "Hey, what's up?" in French. French. Um, <laughs> right now, there's there's a, there's more people streaming Eagle Island in French than there is in English, uh, and I don't know why that happens, but. <laughs> the point is, we did like this global outreach push, and that helped show me that you know there there's a lot of value in reaching out to those other markets, um, especially like Brazil down here. Brazil has almost no big media outlets, so they're a really great spot to go with indie game material. They'll almost always cover your stuff. It's like indie uh, powered like media reviews. Um, and this is just like something I threw together also. Uh, I think the point of a launch is to try to make one big wave on the day of launch. Um, instead of making a bunch of tiny splashes, that'll help your algorithm uh, kind of like trend. It'll help where you are on Twitch and all that stuff. Um, I think in this sort of, in the marketing mindset, I like to start backwards from the deadline. So if you say your launch date is August 1st, uh, I might you know set July 20th as the day we announce that launch date. Um, and that you know tells you that you should have two press releases kind of on standby, one for the day your game's coming out, and one for the day your game is out. Um, this was my first time really dealing with like an influencer sort of approach, uh, where if you do happen to find creators or anyone like that who's interested in sharing your game, um, usually they're totally okay with obliging to, to like an NDA or some sort of embargo, where you can say like, hey, we're gonna give you access to this game early, but you can't share any content until the day the game comes out. And then the day that the game comes out, you have a bunch of streamers already streaming, you have a bunch of reviews going up, um, and doing stuff like that. Um, a good practice, I think, to leading up to launch day is like daily posts that are really like content forward, um, sending out that press release the day before so that reporters get it at 6 a.m. So when they come at 8 a.m., it's towards the top of their mailbox, um, and you know, doing this embargo thing, which which I didn't really know was a thing, but it totally makes sense. Um, that's pretty much everything. Uh, don't forget, we work on our computers, but most of the world views the computer on their phone. So when you're making anything, make sure it's mobile friendly, or else you're just gonna miss the audience, you're totally gonna miss your mark, um, and your conversions are gonna be low, and that's not fun. Thanks. Uh, if anybody wants to talk more about like platform specific things, I have opinions. Um, <laughs> and I'm on the twitter.com at hungry and angry. So uh, yeah, thanks. I have a new question. Yeah. What is Discord and why should I use it? Discord. <laughs> Gamer chat. Yeah, Discord <laughs> is like Discord's like a four year old app at this point. Uh, it's a really great spot for like community building. Um, basically, you make an account and you can join a bunch of different Discords. I'm in a My Hero Academia Discord. I'm in a Discord with just my friends. I'm in a Discord with the game mechanics. And you use Slack. Yeah. Do you want Slack but good? 
Do you want Slack, but if your friends are in the voice chat channel, you can go on it and just go boo, and, <laughs> and then they're all like, what the fuck Who is was that? That's <laughs> Discord. Do you want to accidentally leave your mic on for days at a time? There you go. Discord is the app for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. pretty cool. And you can make your own, you can just like, <laughs> like invite people like, to servers. It's, great. it's, it's, it's a great way to, to yeah. stay in contact with people more personally <laughs> and like. <laughs> We want an app that updates 500 times a day. You have to create an account on that Slack server. Discord, you have your Discord account. People are just like, oh, I already have this Discord thing. I'll just log in to Hey, you should check out this Discord and I'll send you an invite. Do you want Slack, but instead of opening 15 different websites to go to 15 different Slack, it's all in the Discord app at the same time? That's so um, are you going to have these slides available later? Oh, yeah, these slides are great. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah if, if they're cool with it, I'll, put, I'll ask if, they, if we can put the slides up. I mean, my slides on. are trash. Okay. I'm glad I didn't what? go after you. I did today. I'll follow you, too. Thanks. Oh, yeah, I'll follow you, too. Are there any other questions? I'll just green grab it from YouTube. <laughs> I know your company does, like, budget, right? Is there, and I know that's sort of based on like how much the game might sell, but is there, because um, I think a lot of people will always have to sell the play how it might sell. Is there, and, and obviously if you're doing like a year or two, you're getting into like 100,000, 500,000. Is there anything that you would know that would, a company would hear a number and just be like, they would fall at a certain number? Especially when like Kickstarter numbers are probably in like tens of thousands. Yeah. If you're going for a publisher, you'd be like, yeah, I have more success if I shoot for like seven five or something. I don't, I don't so I haven't been in the publishing conversation long enough to really understand like what the pitch situation is like. Like I hopped in on this cycle at the end, um, but we're moving into three games that are early, like still getting design sessions, and I think I'll get more insight on that like, soon. I think it's interesting. Uh, to hear someone going to a publisher and requesting like 150,000, but then settling for like 40,000 on Kickstarter. Um, I think if a publisher is going to invest in your game, uh, it makes sense that you ask for like the minimum sort of budget um, and hope. If I mean, this is this is totally opinion. I don't have enough like insight here. <laughs> but then hope that they like love your project and want your project to be good enough that they invest money outside of what you asked to just ensure that it's a good project, you know. Um, when you're thinking of like costs for booths and traveling for events and like paying someone a full-time salary to work on a game, it all adds up pretty quick. So I think like a good pitch is getting those costs, adding it up, and then and, and, like seeing how it goes. But I don't really have to so be like, yeah, do this. When you mentioned like sending pressure pieces, like yeah. how, or even like one for launch day, like how often do you feel like you're impressed with I really think it's important to just do it when there's something like super like newsworthy. Um, it's like your big ass milestones. I think people who send them out often uh, will just get like shit listed, especially if they're through MailChimp, and you like will go into like, you know, the, the second tab on Gmail anyway. Um, so I think announcing a launch date, I think like the day or like the game's coming out is really effective. We sent one after Eagle Island won the Momocon Award for Best Indie Game, and no one covered it. And then we thought that was like a relative milestone. Um, but then seeing how people reacted to announcing the launch date and, and that the game was finally out, uh, I probably won't like push for sending a press release on something like that. Um, I would say that like that was a good Twitter post uh, instead. How would you be able to say, like, for the list of press you're sending to, yeah. just like a ballpark of how big that list is? I mean, the more the better, because you're just like better opening your chances up for like securing a review piece. Um, I just mean, like, if I started a list, I would say like 100 contacts. Is like just 100? Okay. More. Like, 500 is awesome. But that takes a lot of time. It, it yeah. definitely is like really time. Consuming. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was just like, oh, if I started writing about me, maybe I might get 100 
but I was just curious, like, if you're like, at 2,000. Yeah, no, we, we've been setting us like 300, and like 10, so it's, you know, the more the better. Um, a lot of the developers I work with seem sort of like to have this fear that um, they're going to post too much on, on Twitter and become annoying to people. Yeah. Um, and I always try to encourage them that, that that's not the case. Like there's there's almost no way you can get that annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> I guess I, I'm asking you like um, at what point <laughs> like do you have a like a post per day where it's just like okay just slow down and like, like imagine someone who has infinite capacity. Yeah. What's the point at which you become? I don't think you should like post more than three times a day. Three times? Yeah, but like that I think is generous. I think that's really generous. Um, and the way that like. I think if you look at how your posts kind of perform on your personal accounts, uh, I've kind of built this opinion that like if I post six tweets in four hours, people will like the fifth tweet in like three days. So I think there's restrictions built in app that make it so your tweets, like if someone's following 400 people, they're not going to see every tweet you see. Mm. So the same messaging in different ways means they're going to see at least one of those tweets once then and then maybe another tweet in two or three days. So the fear of sharing too much, uh, I think, especially on Twitter, is like not really a thing you should have. I think on Facebook, then I think it's a different story. Um, I think, yeah, I feel like you could share a lot on Instagram too, but a lot of people don't do more than one post a day. That, you know? I guess it would be about seeing how the tweets are performing or whatever posts are performing and then being like, let's dial it back if they're losing engagement as we post more tweets in it, you know? Um, and then finding whatever that the core number is for me. Yeah, well, the last, one, last question? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to bounce off of what, something you mentioned when answering Corey, that you said that the story might be different with Facebook. Facebook, unlike Twitter, has an algorithm that like determines, OK, I'm going to show this person at this point in time. And I don't know if you had any, like, experience or advice of dealing with that algorithm yeah, like when meeting, using Facebook or any social media platform that uses a similar formula. It's tough. The only thing I know for sure about algorithm stuff is that when you're using scheduling software like Buffer and Hootsuite and stuff, uh, platforms are less likely to like like push that content because it's not, like you're not using it through the platform, it's not as organic. A lot of people like scheduling their stuff out through a uh, platform. Um, or through like some sort of like SaaS, you know, but uh, I don't think that's like the best thing. Interesting. If you had a database that you could that. just that's go really into, <laughs> if, uh, as an alternative, if you have a big database with all those posts, you can copy paste, you have higher chance of getting like better engagement, mm -hmm. but without the scheduling, like, slide. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, thanks. Thank cool, thank you. Awesome. So uh, that's it. Um, if, for those of you who are expecting to hear Sean talk, uh, he couldn't make it, but he is going to be doing his talk at another thing on submitting the festival. So that should be really cool. But um, big hand to Nicole and Julie, and I think those are awesome. Very cool. <laughs> and uh, that's really nice. So um, we're going to have a little more time to like hang out and mill around. And in two weeks, um, ship those games. Come back here and, and we'll do a showcase so we'll play all the games and celebrate. You guys have been working really hard for two months so I can't Woo! wait to see and play a game. So yeah, awesome. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was really cool. Yeah, no problem. And would you mind if I close your slides? No, it's fine. Okay. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Cool. I'll send them to you. Okay, awesome. I'll just put them on the website. That's cool. Yeah. Or I could just put them inside. You can put them on the website. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, cool. I mean, this was a very good. Um, what are you up to? Are you? I was gonna try to play.